Hello friends, welcome to this very brief but important lecture on the Incas. The Incas were the last of a long line of great Andean societies like the Chavin, the Nazca, and the Mochica, also known as the Moche. From the capital of Cusco, the empire stretched some 2,800 miles along the Pacific coast and the Andes mountains, connecting some 10 to 12 million people who spoke about 30 native languages, of which Quechua was the dominant language. This video will focus on Inca quipus, chasqui runners, road system and suspension bridges, and the Incas masterful engineering and in this order. So let's begin with the quipus, which is a Quechua word that means not. The quipu is the primary way Inca shared physical messages and recorded data. Unlike the Maya, who had the only complete written language in all of the Americas and advanced mathematics and calendar systems, the Incas didn't have that type of writing. So quipus were vital for communication. Quipus were a series of strings that represented numbers or other data. The knots represented numerical values. The basic quipu is made up of one main chord with additional strings with all the data. And sure, it's true that with quipus, one knot shows the value of one, two knots could mean two, three knots could equal three, and so on. But this is how you read larger numbers with quipus. So pay attention, this is it. Kipu knots can be separated into groups of ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, and so on. And all you have to do is add the value on the knots. And that's it. It's simple math. It's easy. Let's go ahead and try one. So what's the total number of the first string? Just add the dots and their respective numeric values. Two in the thousands group, zero in the hundreds groups, six tens, and three ones for a total of 2,063. And what's the total number on the second string of the quipo? Three thousands, three hundreds, five tens, four ones for a total of 3,354. And the total number on the third string? There's four thousands, four hundreds, five tens, and two ones for a total of 4,452. And it's that easy. Anyone can read this. In addition, the distance between knots could also deliver distinct meanings. And the different colors of the string could represent different articles, population, districts, and other data. And a Discovery Channel documentary also claimed that prefabricated stones like this one could add in the deciphering of quipus. And how do the Incas move the quipus and their data around the empire? By chasqui runners. Chasqui runners were messengers. They were spread out about every 20 kilometers, passing messages from one runner to another, like the Pony Express of the Old West. Chasqui runners could run about 280 kilometers in a single day via this relay system. Chasqui runners moved across a 15,000 mile roadway system, which was much larger than any European roads and one of the most elaborate in the world. Some were causeways, others were stoned and paved roads, while some were dirt, but still connected the empire. Many roads were connected with elaborate suspension bridges. Ichu grass is used, now it's soaked before it's twisted into an incredibly strong rope. Smaller ropes are turned and braided into larger ones. And some of the bridges were high, about 100 feet, just like this bridge. It's a bit scary, but completely stable. 
Shorty. And they had a very Indiana Jones feel to it. Now this takes us to our last section, which is the most significant because it's about the Incas master engineering. The Incas were expert builders and expert stone masons. Sacsayhuaman is an amazing example of the urban planning skills. A former fortress, the walls were built with tremendous stones, some weighing over 100 tons, and they were incredibly tightly packed, but with irrigation gutters to let the water escape in order to stop water erosion. And it took 25,000 people more than 20 years to build. By comparison, here's a Roman wall. Although it's older, they haven't done as well over time. Yeah, that's better. The greatest example of Inca engineering is probably Machu Picchu. Machu Picchu is 7,792 feet above sea level, and the name means Great Peak. It's built between two earthquake faults, and it was built by Pachacuri, the ninth Inca ruler. There are over 200 stone structures here, such as homes, temples, and fountains. And it took 50 years to complete. Around 1,000 people lived here, which was a sort of winter retreat or getaway spot for Inca rulers slash elite. It wasn't a vast city. Now terraces are the foundation of Machu Picchu. And they were the first things built and are the only reason the building still survived to this day. You can't build anything without a strong foundation, asked my ex-wife. It rains a lot in the area, about 76 inches a year. So the Incas devised an ingenious system of terraces as their structural foundation. The terraces also moved water away from the city and was part of the drainage system. Each of the terrace stones had a layer of topsoil, then sandy dirt, then gravel and larger stones, and it filtered the water slowly and safely, so there's almost no erosion. It essentially worked as an advanced water filter. Now the walls of Machu Picchu had holes every 10 meters to prevent flooding. And there was more than 100 of these drains throughout the city. Here's another part of the drainage system. And some of the excess water was moved to fountains. And in effect, they built an underground water drainage system. After creating some of the world's greatest foundations and removing excess water, how do they build and move stones? Answer, they build in granite, which is an incredibly hard stone. And all they used was direct hammering from a handheld stone. It was one stone versus another stone. The worker would just find the weakest part of the stone to knock off and knock it off. From there, it was likely moved to the site on rollers. And to move it exactly into place, it's like a game of Tetris. You had to fit everything nearly perfect. Then they could make an indentation to match a rock below and a massive stone could be held up by a smaller stone until they smoothed out the surfaces for an exact match. Then that wedge is removed and voila, it's a perfect fit. But why does all the walls look so smooth? Well, after the stones were put into place, the stone was smoothed out. The Incas often removed those protruding parts of the rock. Those were actually there to help carry the stone. Once it was already carried and moved into place, it wasn't needed anymore, so it was simply smoothed out and all of the finishing work of their engineering was done at the site. And I wanted to tell you that at the top of Machu Picchu is a sacred pillar known as the Intihuatana. 
and that it's in alignment with four mountain gods. And it's the center of four mountains and the center of the four cardinal points. But we're out of time. So that's it. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like, share it to anybody who might enjoy the material. Please have a blessed day.